Ready to follow up now? No, that, okay. that Representative that's my question. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, just go um, ahead. We're, we're doing this informally, so well, you can okay. just follow up, okay? Uh, just um, Representative Renoir has had his hand up prior to me, so I'm happy to. No, let's go ahead. I'll get to him. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, very quick question, and I think this uh, question really stems from um, our uh, exploration potentially in the Gulf for oil um, and some of the platforms, those type of issues. And, and obviously, to me, uh, from what I've been reading, it could potentially uh, interfere with the operations. Um, is there any truth to that? Uh, it, would that interfere with um, the good work that you do? Your training exercises, those type of uh, operations, or is there no truth at all to that? Uh, I can answer that question in, in very generic terms, uh, but we've been encouraged to refer any questions regarding offshore drilling to the uh, Office of the Secretary of Defense. So uh, my answer has to be broad. Uh, but I can tell you, if you're asking me a specific question, is there a potential for offshore exploration to impact military operations? The answer is yes. Uh, I can give you a specific example that was uh, taken under consideration last year at Eglin Air Force Base. Uh, there is an existing under, uh, underwater pipeline that runs approximately from Mobile down to the central part of uh, Florida. I'm not sure that, um, excuse me? Okay, yes, sir. Uh, so that pipeline exists right now. Uh, the military mission is accomplished above that, above the water, of course. Uh, we received a request at Eglin from the company that owns that pipeline to install a boosting pump station that would be an overwater platform to, in order to increase the flow of oil, I believe it is, or maybe it's natural gas, I'm not sure, through that pipeline. Uh, that was considered and through the process that we used to analyze things that might impact our ability to perform the mission, it was made very clear <laughs> that there was a very great safety risk that would result if uh, we, we very regularly fly uh, unmanned aircraft over the water, over the Gulf Ranges, and uh, we very regularly shoot down those aircraft in order to test missiles, uh, and they have to land somewhere. So while the percentage possibility and the, the company that presented this data said, well, it's a very small possibility that it would actually hit this platform, uh, we have to take that into account from a legal standpoint and say, even if you put a no harm clause in there. If our, you know, burning, hurtling uh, Volkswagen bus hits your platform, somebody's going to end up having to pay for it, uh, even if there's nobody on it and provisions are set up for that. In addition, uh, those kinds of platforms tend to attract uh, barnacles, fish, fishermen. Uh, we have less control over what goes on on the surface of the water when boats are out there uh, moving around, and we also have to ensure their protection. So it's, uh, I've gone too far here, but uh, I'm just giving you a specific example. Okay. <laughs> the, if the question is, is there a potential for impact to the military mission, the answer is yes. Is it? Thank you. All right. Representative Ren, you are. I, I hadn't planned on addressing oil drilling, um, but since somebody brought it up and the door is open, I thought I would. Um, we can we can be much stronger in our community position than the military can, um, and in in at least in the Panhandle, there is near unanimous support, near unanimous opposition to drilling in the Gulf. As as we look at the assets and and the ranges and the other facilities that are out there, we we live in great fear that if we open the Gulf up to drilling. Um, it gives one more little tick on why we ought not to continue to support the military or why, why the military in Florida becomes vulnerable. So it um, wasn't scripted for that, but I will, I will stand and argue all day that from a community point of view, um, we, we deeply oppose drilling in the Gulf um, to the extent that it can have an impact on the military. So. Colonel Sutton with Department of Military Affairs. I thought we had you for later. I'm sorry. Well, on the Hold public on. comment right here. Okay, go that. ahead. Uh, certainly the Department of Military Affairs has no comment and has no policies on offshore drilling. That is to the people of Florida, and the only way that we would reply with any of our missioning on our basis is what the people of Florida and the people of the nation want. Uh, we understand we use fuel 
we use energy. We're just in the same boat you all are. As the, as the budgets go down, we have to get a little tighter on that. So I want to make sure that everybody understands, the Department of Military Affairs and General, Major General Douglas Burnett, who is the military advisor to the governor, we do not oppose, support, or make comments against or for drilling. We support whatever you're going to do. Whatever happens in the state of Florida, we will continue on with our missions.